Welcome back to Photo 101, your resource for all things photography. Make sure to subscribe for the latest content, and if you enjoy this video, hit that like button. Today we're taking a look at the humble origins of photography, the camera obscura. With powerful cameras built into everything from smartphones to home devices, it's hard to believe that photography is less than two centuries old. While the latest and greatest DSLR might seem like a product of our modern time, at its most basic, it's structured the same way as the earliest cameras. In turn, these came about not out of thin air, but rather from knowledge passed down over more than a thousand years, that of the camera obscura. So how did it work? Well, as the name suggests, the phrase comes from the Latin words camera, meaning room or chamber, and obscura, meaning darkened. And it works like this. We see the world through the light reflected off the things around us. The light begins with a source like the sun or a camera flash, and it bounces off of objects and scatters in all directions. This scattered light tends to travel in straight lines. So when it passes through a small opening, like the pupil of our eye or the aperture of a camera, it helps to focus this scattered light into an image. The effect was known for quite a long time, with the Chinese philosopher Mosey noting it as early as 400 BCE. It wasn't until the Middle Ages, around 1600, that the term camera obscura was coined and the process was refined, aiding artists and inventors in the midst of the European Renaissance. The last step in its evolution came in the early 1800s by placing something light-sensitive inside to record the projected image. Drop the obscura part and you suddenly have what we all know and love, the camera. Perhaps no other photographer engages with the idea of the camera obscura in quite the same way as Cuban-born artist Abelardo Morel. Originally drawn to urban landscapes, he later turned to a deep interest in optics and light. Morel began to convert interior rooms into one large camera obscura, covering the windows and strategically placing a small pinhole to focus the scene on the interior walls. He used a modern camera inside to photograph the scene. Later, he moved to a more mobile setup, outfitting a portable tent with an aperture and small lens in order to focus the scene onto the ground inside the tent. His work invites us to consider not only the simpler origins of photography, but also how our eyes and minds shape the images we see of the world around us. While Morel uses modern gear to record his images, some artists take it even a step further. What if you could step inside a camera while it's taking the image and edit it in real time? The photographer John Chiara does exactly this, shooting directly onto color photographic paper inside large-scale handmade cameras. While making an exposure, he burns, dodges, and often filters the light entering through the lens as if he's working in the darkroom. He then develops these one-of-a-kind photographs by placing the exposed paper into capped PVC pipes filled with chemistry and rolling them across the studio floor to develop the print inside. The photographs he creates show traces of his process, such as streaks and drips and unevenly saturated colors, evidence of the hands-on nature of making these pictures, an approach that's ultimately part photography and part event. It may be a stretch to build your own camera obscura, but many of us are more familiar with its closest and cutest relative, the pinhole camera. While not as impressive as a room you can walk into, the pinhole camera is simply a miniature version of a camera obscura, a light tight container with a small opening. While far from perfect, taking images with a pinhole camera is an opportunity to slow down and embrace the unexpected. The work of photographer Ruth Thorne Thompson is a fantastic example of this approach as she blends real life objects with miniature cutouts. Once photographed from the vantage point of a tiny pinhole, the foreground and background blend in unique ways, playing with a sense of scale in order to create a magical scene reminiscent of a dreamscape. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. We'll see you next time on Photo 101.